Okay, I get to talk again a little bit, but mainly listen. I want to welcome uh, another Alaskan visitor from the straight from the salmon capital of the world, Ketchikan, Chaz Gist. Welcome. So I. Testing. One, two, one, two. Yes. Can okay. you hear me now? Perfect. So, um, the cool thing about doing this is that we get to meet people but at the summit. I've never met you before. Yeah. We have never met. We've had some email dialogue. Absolutely. And we sent some music in for the Alaska fake book or Alaska real book. Absolutely. They did a few years ago. Yeah. yeah. And Karen, who left, Karen Rockus, helped us fly you up here. We're super mm -hmm. happy that you... Thank you very much. K-E-U-L. -K She's not in the room right now, but thank you, Karen, for donating miles. And you live kind of, yeah, far away from here, but very close to Canada. Does it feel more Canadian than Alaskan? No, definitely not. Definitely not. No. Good. That's the, the right. The healthcare is really nice. the main yeah. thing. You can <laughs> really feel it. There is that. Okay, so, uh, it, but just, okay, tell me what's going on in Ketchikan. What works? What is this that yeah. you're working on? So, uh, I've been a full-time bass player in Ketchikan for the, since 2017. And it's been going pretty good. We, uh, I mean, it's bass most of the time, but like uh, Marion earlier was talking about with... Uh, the survey that went out and she's hearing how many things how many shoes people are filling in their community and i like i've been liking the term arts worker that kind of uh builds a little more kind of solidarity compared to kind of a lot of the language kind of makes you feel like an island right and where most people in the arts are doing a whole bunch of things so yeah i'm a, i'm playing bass most of the time but i've been doing a couple guitar gigs a week these days and then i uh help out in the theater i volunteer in the schools Right, and there's all these things that come together, and uh, you know, to make it work. Right, and then um, one of the main things that you're kind of famous for now, just to jump right in, well, is the board boardwalks work that you do. Oh well, we uh, so we have a new uh, burlesque operation, the Red Lantern. So, uh, which will be like a historic kind of uh, burlesque act, but a also a kind of historic tour of sex work in Ketchikan, which has all this great sex work, sex work history from Creek Street and stuff. And so it's a live band burlesque show. Uh, we'll have like three or four acts a day. And uh, so that'll be like a day gig next summer, probably. But uh, in, normally in the summer, there's a whole lot of economic activity. And so I get you know, three or four gigs a day most days. And so it's just bopping from thing to thing to thing. And we talked about this earlier, uh, the people in this town are musicians in this town, often play 16 different styles of music. You rehearse your symphony orchestra at 4 p.m., and then you go and become the Ramones and at 8 p.m. or midnight. Is it the same way in Ketchikan? Do people um, do a lot of different things? Yeah. I, and uh, Alaska is very folky on the whole, but Ketchikan really has no folk music whatsoever. It's just funk and dance bands. For the most part, we have a little we have a little fledgling like chamber group as well, and um, sometimes I play jazz during the day in the summer. But uh, you really gotta kind of be able to do whatever. But as a bass player, it's kind of easy to have a everything needs a bass. But a lot most people don't want to play bass, and also I'm not just stuck in Ketchikan. I go through, usually throughout Southeast, so Ketchikan, Juneau, Petersburg, Sitka. Sometimes Prince of Wales, and then also Pacific Northwest. Mm -hmm. I go to Seattle a few times so, a year. Okay, so you tour quite a lot with... The, can you talk a little bit about that, touring from Ketchikan? A little bit more than what you just yeah. said. Talk so I've uh, more recently... Well, I've been Ray Troll and the Ratfish Wranglers. I've been their bass player for about 10 years. And then uh, Dude Mountain, most recently, um, has been touring through Southeast and probably will be going to uh, up here more often. We just came to Anchorage for the first time... Uh, this last summer to play in Talkeetna, right? But through most of the summer, we had a, a travel gig every two weeks. So it's been very busy, and it'll probably start up again in the spring. And So it's been very exciting. So when you play in uh, if Dude Mountain, for example, how right. often can you play a gig and fill the house or have your good audiences in uh, Dude Mountain Ketchikan. specifically, in yeah. town, we do once or twice a month. But uh, most of my regular work is just playing in restaurants and like... Uh, um, they were saying about, uh, not community, space activation, mm -hmm. space activation, right? So over the last uh, 10 years or so, we've been able to kind of increase musician pay by quite a bit. 
um, Ketchikan was uh, is a community that had kind of stagnated for a little while after our main industries shut down in the 90s. And but by starting to play in restaurants and then building the expectation that there's music in restaurants when you go out and uh, increasing that market and increasing that expectation when people go out, we've been able to kind of control the rates and uh, like what was the the gal from Memphis? I was talking about two hundred fifty dollars. Was your that's what we're usually looking at um, for musicians pay in a given night, and so it's been pretty good up from you know the normal like hundred dollar rate or or just people playing for drink chips or whatever else, right? So we've been able to over time by you know, one collaborating with whoever else is a performer in town and uh, making friends with the bartenders, so they they know how much money is coming in on a given night. And being able to leverage that kind of information when you're talking to a club owner or a bar or a restaurant, whatever. And uh, it's been really helpful for kind of uh, making the industry in Ketchikan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, great. And I'm glad you started to uh, take inspiration from some of the uh, things that we've talked about here. I actually wanted to ask you specifically about another thing, uh, which is the music ambassadorship. Uh, from what you've heard here today about that and maybe what you know or have you know thought about earlier what how would something like that work for you do you think that would work with you and your band uh, uh talking to your Ketchikan tourist agency or muni or uh, being sponsored how 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 would that play out for you do you think i like the idea i think Ketchikan's strange government system would maybe get in the way but if uh, we got through like through the arts council, right? If the arts councils got some funding for it and we were able to organize through them, that would probably help, right? So if it was uh, not so much a city-based but state-based funding, then I think that would work. Okay. Laura, hi. Hi. <laughs> now we'll talk more to arts council and others. Uh, sure. In terms of, we don't have to talk directly about money, but there's also support. Um, uh, can you say something about uh, the kind of audience support and community support you generally feel as a musician in Ketchikan? Well, Ketchikan is very supportive of the arts. Um, there's a very large visual arts and photography community down there, but uh, in general, performing arts are pretty well supported. And it's not like, um, you know, your regional music cities, which often get really saturated and have any given musician might have a hard time convincing somebody to pay them anything. Right, because well, if you don't do it, some other guy off the street will come do it, and they'll be happy to do it. Right, so it can be hard to advocate your, for yourself in a place like Seattle, where it's there's just so much, right? And so, being in a more isolated place and being able to uh, where where it still f- kind of feels special to have live music somewhere, and have that also kind of neighborly connection with whoever's performing, because small town and everybody kind of knows each other. Right, and then on top of that, all the the seasonal workers who come in and out, and the cruise musicians who come in and out. So a lot of times we're playing with the cruise musicians during the day. We have a jazz club downtown, and so you have uh, eight cruise ships in town, and each cruise ship has a couple of bands, right? And we'll just be managing a jam session with all the different uh, cruise ship bands, right? So there's a lot of uh, a lot of energy coming through artistically. Oh, great. Well, that you answered my next question: yeah. How the cruise ships are affecting the music life in Ketchikan, if at all? Well, there's a lot of practical good things as far as all the seasonal workers that come in to support that um, have a lot of economic energy, right? And they're going out and spending all their money every night, and they're young and have a lot of energy. They stay out late. The cruise ships themselves, I would really like a cap. I would like a... Juno's been talking about it, but it's really environmentally and just practically on our infrastructure has been kind of difficult as we go, and it just keeps growing exponentially and it's really frustrating so there's right. good parts bad parts right is there anything else that i should have asked you that uh um you well uh share? we have a new uh a jazz workshop in sitka the sitka jazz week and this last year we had bernard purdy the most recorded drummer in history was the main guest at this uh jazz workshop and i got to go with the gateway trios our trio in ketchikan and then we had uh, some other musicians from new york area some in the Sitka area, and we just kind of, uh, as three separate jazz trios, different rhythm trios, essentially, um, working with a crew of students, and they're going between venues and performing things at the venues with us and having classes with uh, Bernard and the, the rest of the teachers there. And 
that's very exciting. That's in uh, Sitka in August. You can look that up, sitkajazzweek.com or something like that. Yep, sure. that's <laughs> something like that, dot yeah. com. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. Are you going to stick around tomorrow for the... Yeah, I'm sticking tables. around tomorrow. I think I'm hosting a table. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. I was hoping you would say that. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, well, great. Well, thank you so much, Chaz, for talking to us, and we'll see you again tomorrow. Thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you.